The whole of her is harmony, the whole is marvel, the whole is above the world and passion. She modestly reposes in the festivity of her enchanting beauty. Alexander Pushkin devoted those words with unreserved admiration to the canvas The Sleeping Venus by Giorgione. At the beginning of the 16th century, the image of Venus, the goddess of love and beauty, was not yet widely spread in Italian art. Pictures of the nude were rare. A quarter of a century before the great Giorgione Botticelli created his Venus, his goddess, being frail to shade, was an illustration of the ancient world, but Giorgione did not base any literary sources. The depth of his soul and ability to enjoy the nature and the beauty of the body were revealed in the paintings Rural Concert and Thunderstorm. But the sleeping Venus, chaste and inspired, turned out to become a real hymn of the beauty of the female body. Nude figures against the background of landscape could earlier be found in European pictures and engravings, but figures had never been depicted as sleeping ones. The Venus by Giorgione rests on the meadow overgrown with plain white flowers. She is not disturbed by dismal dreams. She is full of calmness, as if she is hovering in her dream. The soft shape of the goddess's body echoes in the surrounding Venetian scenery. A smooth line of gently sloping hills recedes into the distance. Beams of the set of day color the standing still clouds, and the warm sunlight thickens in dark golden hair of the goddess. Venus does not know her nudity, neither did Adam and Eve realize it before their fall. That is why, so innocent and lofty, Venus causes such admiration. Until Giorgione, no one in Italian painting succeeded in reproducing the real warmth of a naked female body so tangibly. The artist achieved the organic merging of the figure and the landscape by means of sfumato, the soft transparency of light and shade. Being an extraordinarily gifted painter, Giorgione could reproduce a plural scale of color and spectrum of the gentlest used. The artist applied paints directly onto a clean canvas without any prior contouring of figures. Many artists, including impressionists, borrowed this manner of painting. Giorgione was not in the habit of affixing his signature to pictures. His masterpieces were kept in private collections of Venetian patricians and were unknown to the public at large. In the course of time, many of his canvases were ascribed to other masters. Even 200 years ago, the Sleeping Venus was considered to be a copy of Titian's picture painted in the 17th century. Venice in the early 16th century, the heyday of High Renaissance. Giorgione is in the zenith of glory. Orders are continuously placed in his art workshop. He hasn't enough time to finish the monumental canvas, as it is necessary to start another one. And the maestro charges numerous pupils, including Titian, with finishing of some separate elements. He himself starts implementation of one secret intention. Giorgione dreams to impress the elusive mystery of female beauty into the canvas. But Venice is plagued with a raging epidemic throughout Europe. Giorgione falls ill without possibility of recovery. From time to time, the artist falls into delirium. Coming to his senses, he constantly comes back in his mind to the uncompleted work, The Sleeping Venus. But the paints remain vainly on the table. Death accepts the master of 32 years in a terrible embrace. Who will be bold enough to finish the picture of Giorgione and add a quiet and majestic landscape? Titian, the pupil of the artist, possessed the similar manner of painting. The foreground and the right part of the landscape in the canvas come from his brush. Practically, the same landscape repeats in the picture of Titian, Noli mi tangri, the apparition of Christ to Magdalene. Titian only decorated it with several trees and added a small hut. It is still unknown which one was created earlier, Venus, or Magdalene. Some researchers consider that Titian's part of the landscape, common and plain, does not match the spiritual Venus by Giorgione. 
It might be that Titian, who could perfectly imitate his teacher, did not wish to make the imitation a la Giorgione. One more secret of the sleeping Venus was revealed with X-ray research of the picture in the 20th century. In the initial variation, urchins sat at the feet of the sleeping goddess. Did he come from the brush of Giorgione himself, or was added by Titian? Who decided to paint the urchin over, Titian or the unknown restorer, and when? These questions remain unanswered. No other single picture from the Italian Renaissance generated the numerous reiterations and variants as the Sleeping Venus did. Monet and Renoir, Titian and Crana the Senior, Rembrandt and Velazquez, Ingres and Goya, Durer and Poussin used the theme of Giorgione, but only the perfection of forms and cleanliness of lines by Giorgione, the genius of beauty, seems to implement the law of absolute harmony. <laughs>